Man, that, that feels heavy. Maybe they're just good fighters. It's right at 30 feet again. It feels like it might be a better fish, but that last one fought really hard, so who knows. Jumping back there, he turned the kayak a little bit. There we go. Wow. He's avoiding the net. <laughs> That's a pretty fish. Nice clean tail. Oh, he really wanted that spoon too. Beautiful fish. Very nice. Get him back in the lake and uh, continue trolling. Man. Howdy, folks. Cal Kellogg here. A couple weeks ago, I got a question from my buddy Wraith down in Fairfield, California. He watches the channel. He reads all my stuff in the fish sniffer. And he asked me, he says, you know, Cal, you, you don't get skunked very often when you're trout fishing. Why is that? And the answer is pretty simple. I go with high percentage baits as much as possible. Uh, take today for example, I'm up here at Frenchman's Reservoir, far northern California, and I am catching trout. It's not a barn burner by, by any stretch of the imagination, but I've never been here before. So what did I put on? Well, it's a buggy looking lake, it's a high mountain lake, and the water's a little murky. So I knew orange and red were going to be key colors for me. Um, I've, I've just had a lot of success on those colors in the past at similar lakes, so that's what I went with. I went with medium-sized spoons that I control, you know, fairly quickly. I'm, I'm moving along here at two to two and a half miles an hour. That's allowing me to cover a lot of water. Beyond that, I'm watching the sonar. I started out shallow, zero results. But when I started marking fish down at 25 and 30 feet, I started letting my lead core work deeper and deeper, and I started hooking fish. About an hour ago, I started hooking fish. So far, I've put two in the, in the kayak, I've had three other hard strikes and a uh, little breeze is coming up now. I expect to hook a few more fish before I'm done here today, absolutely. So go with those high percentage baits. Um, and you know, you learn what the high percentage baits are for yourself based on time on the water, based on experience. But as a rule of thumb, if I'm looking you know, to explore a new lake or I'm just looking to cover ground, I want a medium sized lure that I control pretty quickly that comes in a, in a broad range of colors. Buggy lake like this at high elevation, going with the bright stuff. I'm going with the reds, I'm going with the oranges. Some guys in this situation, they go with the fire tiger. You know, whatever you have confidence in. Now, if I was at a, at a bait fish lake, I'd be using the same basic approach, but I'd be running my chromes, chrome and blue, chrome and green, maybe some whites, some bait fish colored stuff. Beyond that, get the speed right, you know, right for your lure, match up two lures that run at similar speeds, and then watch your sonar unit. Dial in on those marks, and you'll find yourself yelling fish on most of the time. You're still going to get skunked, but you're not going to get skunked very often. Every day might not be a red letter day, but you're not going to get skunked. Anyway, that's my tip for today go with high percentage lures and when I get back to the studio I'm going to talk about what some of my high percentage spoons are when I'm visiting a new lake or when I'm out on one of my favorite lakes you know the kind of basically the same stuff but anyway I'll go over some of my high percentage uh, high percentage lures when I get back to the studio here well I'm back home um when I was up at Frenchman's Reservoir, there were some big lava formations out in that lake, and I ended up losing some gear. It was my first time there, and uh, 
man, let me tell you, those big lava pinnacles, they can sneak up on you and they steal your spoons. So if you happen to be up there, watch out for that. So last night, I headed over to the, the local sporting goods store and uh, I went to replace what I lost, plus, you know, add a few new faces to the tackle box. You know how that is. Um, and I wanted to talk about high percentage lures. I knew I was going to do this video this morning. So I walked right over to the Lure Jensen display. I didn't want to go with something obscure, something you couldn't find. And uh, Lure Jensen, I mean, they've been at it for decades. They make some of the best trout and salmon gear that money can buy. And uh, I wanted to show you some stuff that you could walk into almost any, you know, store that sells trout and salmon tackle and pick up for yourself. So here's what I ended up getting, and I, I got a, I got a several different things, but uh, I got some needlefish spoons, tried and true trolling lure for trout and salmon guys, and I also got some crocodile spoons. Now I didn't lose any crocodiles up at the lake, but uh, I didn't have enough in my box, and I've been wanting to get some, so I, I went ahead and grabbed some. Now these lures, they kind of trigger the same feeding reflex in the fish but they're very different lures. Let me pop some of these out of the packages and uh, we'll talk colors and stuff like that. But let's start out talking about the differences between the needlefish and the crocodile. Okay, I ripped open some of my new toys. And remember, we're talking about high percentage lures. What do trout and salmon feed on? They feed on minnows. So a high percentage lure for me is something that mimics the action of a minnow um, and something that I can fish fairly quickly because when I'm at a new lake or even if I'm not, I like to start out the day covering water fairly qu quickly, you know. So in terms of trolling lures, I like something that I can run from two to two and a half miles an hour, sometimes a little bit faster, but two to two and a half miles an hour is a good bet. And uh, when I'm casting, I like something I can cast a good distance, something I can count down, something I can retrieve pretty briskly and, you know, throw in some, some manipulation of the rod if I want to. So let's take a look at these two different spoons. Here is the needlefish. This is a very, very classic trolling lure. Look how thin that lure is. The profile has a very minnow-like profile. This is just a great trolling bait. The length is right. This is a number two. This is the medium-sized needlefish. Um, this will catch big trout, small trout, trout of all sizes. And this is a lure that I can troll anywhere from, you know, 1.8 or so, maybe even a little bit slower, all the way up to two and a half plus miles an hour. So it has a very seductive minnow action. Um, it, it triggers a feeding responsive fish that are feeding on minnows, but it also triggers curiosity in trout that might be feeding on bugs or crustaceans or other things like that. So very versatile. It's a very high percentage lure. And when I have a needlefish on my line, I got a lot of confidence that I have a lure on there that will trigger strikes from pretty much any trout or landlocked king that I encounter. Now, set that down. The crocodile, the action on a crocodile isn't that different. And just as an aside, I can tell you, I've caught, man, it's a long list. I've caught all the, the species of black bass on crocodiles. I've caught trout, landlocked kings. I've caught ocean salmon on them. I've caught stripers on them. Um, I've caught stripers on them casting from the surf. Um, I've caught fish on these lures trolling them, casting, you know, fan casting, vertical jigging them. It is one of the most versatile spoons you can have in your box. You can troll it. It's great. But look at this. Look at this spoon. Look how thick it is compared to the needlefish. This lure is not that much larger than a needlefish. I'll hold that number two needlefish up next to it. But this needlefish has very little weight. It is a trolling lure. The crocodile, solid brass, really heavy. It's a half ounce. So you could cast this thing. I mean, crocodiles, I always joke, they cast like an artillery shell. Um, and they're known to catch big fish. They catch small fish too. Um, my buddy Chris Hammond was up at Stampede Reservoir a few years ago casting one of these off the dam. And uh, I'm going to throw that picture up here. He caught like a three and a half to four pound rainbow. Just a beautiful fish. But that's what the crocodile can do for you. You can troll it. You can cast it. You can do a bunch of things with it. And uh, it's just a great trout and salmon lure. So I picked up a few of these. A um, couple notes on trolling these though. 
you know, out here in California, we do a lot of downrigger trolling. If you're trolling a needlefish, let's say you're 100 feet behind your downrigger ball, you can be pretty darn confident that that spoon is running in the same plane as that ball. Now, you know, a lot of us like to work the bottom and that's important. So if you're down 30 feet on the ball, your needlefish can be running at 30 feet, 100 feet behind the ball. Not the case with the crocodile. Crocodile, you know, I would say at two miles an hour, 100 feet behind the ball, this lure runs deeper because it's, it's heavier. It's much thicker. It's, it's made out of heavier metal. So it's probably going to be running about four to five feet, maybe even six feet below the ball. So if you're going to troll a crocodile off the downrigger, just keep that in mind. So let's talk spoon colors. Nice thing about the Lure Jensen lineup of both needlefish and crocodiles is you're going to find every finish you can imagine from the bright stuff to the bait fish stuff. They have all those and more, um, just an extensive line of colors. Um, so what did I pick up? Well, I picked up some bright stuff for the high Sierras and I picked up some bait fish colored stuff for down in the foothills. Now, when I'm up in the high country, I, I know I sound like a broken record. The fish are feeding on bugs, they're feeding on crustaceans. I like orange and red lures. Other guys, they go for the fire tiger and the chartreuse, stuff like that. But orange and red are money baits for me in the high country. And I lost one of my favorite orange needlefish up at Frenchman's Reservoir. You saw me catch a fish on it in the opening to this. So I replaced it with this, and I fell in love with this when I saw it. The one I lost was just straight orange on orange, but this one is, is orange with uh, gold prismatic tape. It's got a brass back. That is a money bait for the High Sierra, so can't wait to use that. I also picked up, this one caught my eye. I've, I've really come to love copper spoons over the last few years. So I got one that is orange and copper. Same on the back as on the front. That's gonna be a great lure when you want something a little more subtle. Um, copper's a great option. And of course, I got a frog finish. Um, I had a few frog finishes, but uh, you know what? I saw one, I had to grab it. Frog is just one of my favorite, favorite finishes for the high Sierras and every trout angler should have a frog finish spoon in their box. Uh, they should probably have more. I have like a dozen probably. So anyway, the old frog. And uh, I did get some bait fish patterns too for down in the valley, down in the foothills. Um, I grabbed this large shad pattern needle fish. That's an awesome looking bait. Um, that's a bait I'll use at a, at a big fish lake like Shasta, Folsom, Don Pedro, something like that. So threw that in the box. I haven't even taken that one out of the package yet. And of course, I've got my all time favorite um, bait fish pattern needlefish and that is the Chrome Bikini. If I could have one trout lure and one finish for trolling, Man, it'd be tough not to go with the, with the bikini pattern chrome needlefish. I've just caught so many fish on it. It's a very standard pattern. Every serious trout troller has several of these in their box. And uh, there's a simple reason for that. They trigger strikes. It's got some bright color on it, but uh, you know, the back is chrome. There's a lot of chrome there. When the fish are keying on, you know, threadfin shad, pond smelt, stuff like that. They have a very difficult time laying off of this lure. Just troll it through them at about two miles an hour and uh, you're likely going to be yelling fish on. Now in the crocodile lineup, I, I just stayed basic. Basic stuff. Um, chrome and blue. You know, chrome and blue, one of my very favorite bait fish imitations. Again, this is a lure for Shasta, Folsom, Don Pedro, stuff like that. Fish are feeding on on pond smelt or threadfin shad. They're gonna jump all over that. And uh, I saw this one, I didn't have one of these, a half ounce frog pattern crocodile. Hey, that's money in the high Sierras. Anyway, those are the colors I picked out. You're gonna find every color you want in the Lure Jensen lineup. If you're looking for high percentage trout lures, grab some needlefish, grab some crocodiles, and get out on the water. This is Kel Kellogg signing off. I'll catch you right here again on YouTube and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you for supporting the channel folks.